Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. May we have roll call, please? Check their cell phones and make sure they're turned off. Board members, too. Okay, the first item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from the July 23rd, 2013 meeting. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Mr. Sheridan, thank you. Second. Ms. Hughes, thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is public comment. This is for um, any um, thing that anyone in the audience would wish to speak to the board about, including our public meeting item, since we don't have a public hearing on that item itself. Is there anyone here wishing to speak to the board? Seeing none, we'll close public comment. The next item is Resolution number 2717-13, Gateway Gardens PSP. Do we have the applicant here? Yes. You come to the podium, state your name and address for the record, and tell us about your project. Describe it to us and why. tell us why we should approve it. Madam Chairman, members of the board, my name is Steve Mellich, 500 North Maitland Avenue, Maitland, Florida, 32751. <clears throat> This 130 lot subdivision proposed at a density of less than 2 DU per acre, even though R1A allows for a maximum of 3.5 units per acre. This project also proposes nearly 14 acres of usable open space, while your code at R1A only requires 3.39 acres of usable open space. In addition, during our final engineering, we are making every effort we can to save every tree, especially the heritage trees that are shown on the plans. This project proposes a landscape buffer with a minimum width of 20 feet along the entire perimeter of the project. In addition to that, all three of the retention ponds are also located along the perimeter of this project, which adds to the buffering of the adjacent property. This project on Oklahoma and County Road 426 is proposing turn lanes to provide safe and adequate egress and ingress to this project. We have with us tonight representatives from the civil engineering consultant, the traffic consultant, the wetlands consultant, the phase one environmental consultant, and the landscape architect to help answer any questions you may have. We agree with staff and DRC's recommendation for approval and respectfully request your approval for, for your recommendation for approval. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions of the applicant? <coughs> Madam Chair. Mr. Wright. Um, first, the only question I really have is, and again, it's more of a civil engineering related question, so yeah. someone's here maybe to answer that. Okay. Um, we always end up with this problem with these, uh, if I'm understanding this is a private gated development. Correct. For, um, the entrance, from what I see so far, is landscape it doesn't provide any way for anybody to come in. They can't get through the gate to get out. The, the preliminary subdivision plan shows a continuous island with the gate. It's been noted during, we've already made a submittal to final engineering. It's been noted and agreed upon that we need to have a bailout lane. We need to have a call box. We need to have a bailout lane. And that change wasn't addressed at the PSP, but it will be addressed at the final engineering. Perfect. That's the only question I have. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? I have a question. You said that the minimum landscape buffer is going to be, it's going to be a minimum of 20 feet wide. What we're showing on the preliminary subdivision and the final engineering is a buffer along the entire perimeter of the project that measures to be a minimum of 20 feet. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Can we hear from staff? Thank you, Madam Chairperson. 
This is a request for the Planning, Zoning, and Appeals Board, PZA, to recommend approval of preliminary subdivision plan for a 130 lot single family residential development. The proposed subdivision is located on the northwest corner of the intersection of County Road 426 and Oklahoma Street. You have a location map where you can see the exact location of the project. It's attached to your staff report. The total land area is 67.81 acres. The property owner is Charles H. Cox. The developer is American Land Investments of Central Florida, LLC. And the applicant's consultant is Dave Schmidt Engineering, Inc. The subject property has a low density residential future land use designation and a single family residential R1A zoning district. The applicant proposed to build 130 single-family residential lots with a typical lot size of 11,000 square feet, an average of 85 by 130 feet in each lot. There will be three retention pond areas, tracts A, B, and C, two landscape buffer tracts along the boundary of the proposed subdivision <coughs> with an average width of five feet, two recreation tracts totaling 1.50 acres and one lift station tract. You can see all that in the site plan, the preliminary site plan, in the, also in your attachment. The streets will be private and the development will be gated. Lots number 128, 129, and 130 are designated for a temporary sales office, trailer, and model homes. This is also shown on the site plan. The entrances to the development will include a brick wall entrance feature and landscaping. Interior landscaping will include a canopy street tree for every 50 feet of interior road right of way. Concurrency requirements have been satisfied. The development will have two full entrances, one located on County Road 426 and the other on Oklahoma Street. Portable water and sewer service will be provided by the city of Oviedo. Solid waste capacity is available through Seminole County. The Development Review Committee considered Site Development Order 428.13 in the Gateway Gardens PSP at a public meeting held on August 22, 2013, and thereat DRC recommended approval. Staff recommends that the PZA recommend approval of the subject preliminary subdivision plan subject to the conditions contained within Site Development Order number 428-13. The Site Development Order is also attached to your packet and I just would like to observe that besides the normal conditions of approval that are for all uh, PSPs, I, we have conditions number 9 and 10. Condition number nine specifies that lots number 128, 129, 130 may be used as sites for a temporary sales office trailer and model homes. And condition number 10 states that the applicant shall pay a fee to the sidewalk fund equal to the cost of constructing sidewalks along Panther Avenue, which is located on the north side of the, the tract, but it, Panther Avenue is a public right of way, but it's not improved. So instead of uh, constructing sidewalks on an unimproved road, um, the city requires that the applicant pay the cost of the sidewalks to the city, to the sidewalk fund. This concludes my presentation and I'm avail available for questions. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions of staff? Um, looking at the, the property, there's obviously the two entrances, one being along Oklahoma. This is the second development we've seen in the last two months. It's gonna be having um, traffic issues possibly or traffic um, that are gonna be going through um, the Black Hammock area. I know we discussed at our last meeting um, the other subdivision, the shared one between Oviedo and Winter Springs, exiting out on De Leon and coming out on the 434. Mm -hmm. Has there been a traffic study um, looking at this, the impact of this onto that? that yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, all PSP and when we do the final engineering plans, we send the traffic counts to our uh, traffic consultant and they analyze the generate the traffic generated by all these um, houses, which is in average 10 trips per day. 
you know, against our traffic concurrency table, which has all the level of services and the, the number of trips per day that each one of the roads has. So they either they um, approve it or they request the applicant to provide a traffic study. And they did so, and even though it's, uh, con it's concurrent with our table, with our concurrency matrix. Mr. Um, and you may have said this, I just didn't hear it. I know, um, wh when was DRC's approval? What date? 22nd, August 22nd. 22nd. We couldn't, uh, we provide the staff report for you before that. Okay. And okay. actually in the staff report it said that we would provide the uh, DRC recommendation during the meeting and that's what uh, I did. Mr. Um, Pollack? I, I had a couple questions on the, um, there's some lots here that are on corners and stuff that aren't conforming. Um, you know, they're not, well, they're not square or rectangular lots. Um, some of them have less than, you know, a minimum lot size of 85 feet. Is that still conforming with our, with our code? Yeah, um, the lot size, you have two issues that you have to look when you look at this, the lots is the area and the width. So these are the two standards for R1A. R1A <coughs> width minimum is 85 and area is 10,890 square feet. Now the way that we measure the width of a lot is at the setback uh, line. Oh, okay. So because we can't, we, we approve lots that have at least they have to have at least a 20 foot frontage to a street right of way, but because sometimes the lots can be completely irregular, mm -hmm. you have to have the minimum 20, 20 feet, so they have. But as you know, you, you measure when, where the house is going to be located, so you can have all the setbacks met in all the sides of the lot. And so that's what is happening. It, this usually happens on the corner lots because you don't have a curve that will be 85 but they open. Gotcha. Yeah. And, and my other question is the uh, item number 10 in the conditions, the, the Panther Avenue, um, I guess equal to the cost of Panther Avenue, the, the sidewalks. Um, what, what's the reason behind that? I mean, are, you know, when, when someone comes in to develop, they, they need to provide the sidewalks provide around, sidewalks the, whole around yeah. the whole property. Around the whole property. So, yeah. So will that fund, you know, if they, if that, if Panther Avenue does get improved, then they will, the sidewalk it will be It should be used that for line. that, yes. Okay. That's all I have. Anyone else? I have one. Um, you said that the average width of the landscape buffers is five feet. Can you tell me which page that's on where we can see that? Sorry? Is there a page number you can reference that we can see that? Yes, you can look at the sheet P or five. It doesn't have here. On close to track D on the south side, no, on the, not on the south, on the west side of the it says existing 20 foot canal maintenance easement, which is 20 feet. I don't have a scale here to measure it. So then what's in our staff report is incorrect? It's incorrect, yes. Okay, thank you. 
that would be measured. So. And um, can you also tell me what's being done about um, the applicants said they were working to save all of the heritage trees? Yes. You I can. don't see anything in here about that. If you look at the landscape plants, actually, have the table counting all the trees that are existing, all the trees that have to be replaced. You see on the on this sheet also all of the trees that are over 30 here. And there is a note that there are no champion trees on site. That's something <coughs> that we confirmed with uh, our city arborist. And the final tree count will be determined at final engineering plan and final mitigation to be confirmed with final engineering. The development shall comply with the LDC section 15.2, tree protection, removal, and replacement. And on the site plan sheet number three, we have five going back. We have a note on the right hand side on the bottom that all heritage trees will be evaluated during final engineering to determine which trees can be saved. And that's, we usually, when we do the final engineering, they will have to layer the lots with the trees. And when they do also the, when they pull out the permit, the permit, clearing and permit, we do that again. So we confirm that. And that's when, if there is some tree to be saved, that the arborist will go there and check whether that tree uh, is healthy because th this is another issue too. Sometimes we think that the tree is healthy, but it's not. Okay. That, that's the procedure. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions of staff? Okay. This um, is not a public hearing item, so what's the board's pleasure? I'm, I'm sure. Sure. Uh, Mr. Your way. <laughs> uh, I'd like to make a recommendation, uh, motion to recommend approval of resolution number 2717-13, site development order 428-13. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Mr. Wright, thank you. Is there any discussion? Madam Chair? Mr. Wright? Um, just real quick, I'd like to let staff know, I think it was um, refreshing to when we went through this, at least when I went through this, that it was um, very concise. All the information was here. The applicant was very well prepared. Everything was in the plans tonight. So um, I know we've had issues with that in the past. So, and we've commented on that. So I'm commenting on the fact that this was very well placed. Uh, and the um, one thing I did like on the plans personally was the fact that the tree, the interior streets had trees set up for them too. So it was um, very well done. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Okay, we'll call the question. All those in favor of the motion to approve, or to recommend approval, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Just, Thank you. just a minute. This item will be considered by the City Council on? It's not scheduled yet, but uh, we will try to put on the September 16th agenda. Okay. Thank you. Good luck. Right. Thank you very Good luck. Thank you for having everyone here tonight. <laughs> Okay, the next item on the agenda um, will be discussion items. Does anyone have, um, there's nothing on our agenda for, to discuss. Does anyone have any, any items? Okay. Our future meeting dates are September 17th. It's a special work session, September 24th, regular meeting, and October 8th, regular meeting. Do we know if the um, two regular meetings are 
going to occur at this point? We're not sure yet. We don't have anything planned on the two regular meeting nights. Okay, thank you. If there's nothing else, do we have a motion to adjourn? Second. Second. I'm slow tonight. You are slow tonight. <laughs> I'm, Almost. A I'm a mouthful candy. Oh. All those in favor say aye. 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 We stand adjourned. We're just trying to keep you out of trouble. That's what you said earlier. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>